Welcome to the World of You Can't Take It With You, a 1938 film that's packed with a roller coaster of emotions. Whether it's laughter, shock, or tears, this movie has it all. So if you're ready for a ride, keep your eyes peeled because there are plenty of funny, shocking, and sad facts coming your way. When was the first time you watched this movie? Share your most cherished memory or personal experience related to it in the comments below. We would love to hear your stories and memories. In today's world, there are certain stories that seem to stand the test of time, resonating with audiences no matter the era. One such tale explores the essence of being true to oneself, finding love, and seeking happiness in life's simple joys. This story, while created decades ago, still holds relevance and captivates audiences today. Its message about embracing who you are and finding joy in the little things is as important now as it was then. You can see its influence in later works of art, showing just how impactful it remains. Ultimately, this narrative serves as a reminder to live authentically and appreciate the moments that truly matter. Involvement in extreme right-wing politics affected Ward Bond's career, causing a slump in work until his comeback in 1957. Ann Miller shared in an interview that every woman on set had a crush on James Stewart. Jean Arthur was honored with a special event on TCN, celebrating her roles in movies. This event showcased her classic performances like in You Can't Take It With You, which made her famous in Hollywood. Despite facing challenges, Jean Arthur's talent and charm made her loved by audiences for generations. Her roles in movies continue to inspire people all over the world. Following its completion, the positive reception led Columbia to organize a substantial international press screening. Eddie Rochester Anderson, along with Irving Bacon, Ward Bond, Eddie Chandler, Wallace Clark, and Harry Davenport, were part of both You Can't Take It With You and Gone With The Wind. Spring Byington welcomed her second child, a daughter named Lois Chandler, with her husband Roy Carey Chandler. In a memorable moment during a Yale Law School Film Society event in 1972, Jean Arthur found herself in the company of Frank Capra. Capra, extending a warm invitation, urged her to stay for the screening that evening. However, she politely declined, citing her responsibility to tend to her pets. During a pivotal scene in the movie, the IRS man confronts Grandpa about his unpaid taxes. Grandpa, echoing his own beliefs, firmly states, I don't believe in them. This sentiment resonates with Lionel Barrymore, a Republican who shared similar views and found himself in significant tax debt. H.B. Warner, a seasoned actor, contributed his talents to several Oscar Best Picture nominees throughout his career. Notably, he appeared in You Can't Take It With You, directed by Frank Capra, the only winner among his credited works. This collaboration marked one of many instances where Warner's presence enriched cinematic history. In the 1970s, there was a famous performer known for her amazing tap dancing skills. When she was on stage, she often wore really big wigs. Later on TV, people made fun of her wigs, especially on shows like The Carol Burnett Show. In a play called Forbidden Broadway, they joked about her time at MGM, even pretending she hit someone with her hair. There was an actor named Irving Bacon who was in some really great movies. He was in three movies that won the Best Picture Award at the Oscars. Some other actors who were in those movies were Ward Bond, Eddie Chandler, and Wallace Clark. Lionel Barrymore was a big deal in Hollywood. He starred in several movies that were nominated for an Oscar. Two of those movies actually won the award. He was a really important part of the movie scene for a long time. During an interview with Robert Osborne for Turner Classic Movies, Ann Miller shared a harrowing experience from her past. When she was nine months pregnant with Reese Milner's child Milner, under the influence of alcohol, subjected Miller to physical abuse, resulting in her being thrown down a flight of stairs. The fall led to a broken back for Miller, who had to endure the pain during childbirth. On a different note, James Stewart, a key figure in the film, had an interesting connection with Scottish physicist Robert Watson Watt. Watson Watt, known for his contributions to radar invention, was a friend of Stewart. Later, Stewart would lend his voice to an Air Force training film that explained the use of radar in ballistic early warning systems. As the movie unfolds, it's worth noting that Omsk, a city in Siberia, is a real location in Russia. This adds a touch of authenticity to the narrative, grounding the story in reality. These behind-the-scenes aspects provide a glimpse into the lives of those involved in the production, bringing a mix of personal challenges, professional connections, and geographical accuracy to the backdrop of the film. In an interesting turn, Spring Byington gave her only Oscar-nominated performance in the movie. Meanwhile, Samuel Hines, while talking with other actors on set, caught the attention of Robert Young, who remembered him from their time at the Pasadena Playhouse. 
Young then introduced Hines to director Gregory LaCava, which led to his big break in Gabriel over the White House. James Stewart, alongside well-known figures like President Ronald Reagan and Charlton Heston, spent six years working on projects to help people understand the U.S. Constitution and Bill of Rights better. These efforts showed Stewart's dedication to teaching people about their rights and laws, and they had a lasting effect on American society. In the world of comedy films, there are some actors who leave a lasting impression. One such actor, Charles Lane, made a memorable appearance in a film back in 1963. His comedic talent showed how important he was to movies that made people laugh. Another actor, Gertrude Weber, ended her acting career with the same film, showing off her skills one last time. James Stewart, according to director John Ford, had a way of playing characters that was hard to understand, but this made his performances even more interesting. Together, these actors made the film a classic, showing how great movies are made when everyone works together. It's a reminder of how powerful teamwork can be in creating something special on screen. Shooting for the film began in late April and lasted just under two months with a total cost of $1.5 million. It marked the film debut of Dub Taylor. Interestingly, both James Stewart and Richard Widmark, who starred in the movie, wore toupees and experienced hearing problems. This led to a humorous incident on the set of a different film, where director John Ford expressed frustration, quipping 50 years in this goddamn business, and what do I end up doing? Directing two deaf hair pieces. In the movie, a tragic incident occurred involving Ann Miller. She suffered a miscarriage when she fell down a flight of stairs after a heated argument with her husband Reese Llewellyn Milner. This event added a layer of complexity to the storyline, highlighting the challenges faced by the characters. Interestingly, the film stands out as one of only two Best Picture Academy Award winners adapted from Pulitzer Prize winning plays. The other film sharing this distinction is Driving Miss Daisy. This accolade underscores the exceptional quality and enduring significance of the source material. Additionally, Jean Arthur, a prominent cast member, underwent psychoanalysis for a year and a half under the guidance of psychologist and philosopher Erich Fromm. This personal detail adds depth to Arthur's portrayal, potentially influencing her performance and character interpretation. These behind-the-scenes insights shed light on the depth and complexity of the film's production, enhancing appreciation for its narrative and performances. Indeed, the movie's blend of tragedy, comedy, and social commentary continues to captivate audiences to this day.